about that because I'm gonna tell you right now I really all three have of me. us all three of us have been to the Hollywood Bowl and I'll tell you right now if I asses was there that night I would have lost my shit and showed my whole natural ass and been like the fuck she was That's awful I didn't, she was awful I didn't understand she wasn't part of the 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 group or the um the what is it the the stage people she wasn't part of it she had a totally different outfit on like something that she wore from home people were saying so that was I don't Kanye. understand what the point was it was Kanye that was Kanye and Kim I'm not even gonna throw that all on Kanye I'm gonna say that's all Kanye and Kim that they were like well, she's not gonna wear that Simba outfit that all the kids wear in the Lion King. Because all you got to do is Google that shit. And she's out there she looking like... she wasn't part of the production. She's, she's out there looking like Tweety Bird with her hoodie and her little moccasins on her feet. And I'm like, wait the fuck? What are you wearing? That was her parents. That's Nepo Babies at its finest. And I don't like it. No. She should have never been in that show at the Hollywood Bowl at the 30th anniversary anniversary of the Lion King. She should have never been there. Mm-mm. Nope. Sorry. Not sorry. I'm going to have to like agree. It. I don't like talking about little kids, but I don't understand what she the was point terrible. was. Rap on your daddy's nope. album. That was blue. That was, that was who? Whose child was that? Whose child was that? Kardashian and, and Kanye? Kim Kardashian yep. and Kanye Kim West. And, and, uh, Kanye. Oh. For and, some reason, I had it in my head that it was um, Blue Ivy. Oh, really? Bro. No. Blue Ivy is Beyonce now, and Jay-Z's child. I know, but I'm saying I could see because of the Beyonce thing. That's what I, I had in my head, that it was because Beyonce was in Lion King and all that stuff. So I thought they put their daughter in it. There is no uh, way, reason at all for Kim Kardashian and for their child to be in that production. Now it's even more egregious to me because I thought at least it was like uh, there was Blue Ivy and it was like, oh, she's a singer. She comes with she's a performer. She did perform at the Beyonce's thing. Maybe it just wasn't. She was nervous or... Okay, now that I'm down, it's con- that's ridiculous. That's that's egregious. But that's egregious. That's... Let me say this: the film adaptation, the thirtieth anniversary anniversary of the film ad- adaptation of The Lion King. It's Beyonce. I saw the trailer. All you got to do is go online and look it up. It's Beyonce plays Nala. Nala. Yeah, she's right. the voice of Nala and Blue Ivy. I went to from. I went to the premiere, remember? Hmm? Yeah, I went to the premiere, remember? Oh, yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, I don't remember, but okay. But Beyonce and Blue Ivy are in the at the film adaptation of the 30th anniversary. So I'm looking at it like, okay, here we are. It's the jo- Joneses, the Joneses versus the Joneses, where now... Kim Kardashian and Kanye West is like, oh, so Beyonce already voiced Nala in the last uh, film version of The Lion King. And now this new version is going to be both Beyonce and Blue Ivy. And now we got to get our kid in this some way, somehow. And it's the Hollywood Bowl. It's the Hollywood Bowl. And we're going to have her ask about the stage and sing that shit. I didn't like it. 
I thought it was reg. I thought it was raggedy, and I thought that. I, and I'm sorry. I know she's ten or eleven, but I'm like, nah. I hope that child learned some humility. I can tell you that much. That part. I hope. Her, I hope her parents are like, okay, we're gonna let you try it, and you're gonna you're gonna fail epically, and now you know better either to train or let someone else do it or this that, and the other. But that's not what's gonna happen. She's gonna get him. Yeah, that's not what's gonna happen. Because because the Kardashians and I mean obviously it's Kanye's talented in what he does, but yeah. Kardashian has no talent at all, and they're delusional thinking that just because you're famous, <coughs> just, <coughs> just because you're famous, you can you have talent. But money talks, and and these Kardashians are sitting on all this money and all this fame and whatever. So now they're like, okay, we're just going to bypass all these other aud- auditions for these kids and we're going to we're going to put my kid in. And it's not a good look because I that shit was horrible. If if listen, if I was at the Hollywood Bowl, if if I would have paid for my ticket to go to the Hollywood Bowl or if the three of us went to the Hollywood Bowl for that Jennifer Hudson, all these other A-listers coming out and singing, and then she pops up. Uh, what's his name? Um, Weaver. What's his name? Jason Weaver. Jason, Jason Weaver. Jason I did a lottery ticket with him. He's a nice guy, by the way. He's a nice I guy. And I, 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 listen, I'm all for that. But he Jason Weaver came out. He's the original the voice of Simba. Mm-hmm. And he's making a whole lot of money on that shit. So he ain't got nothing to lose. So he came out to freaking introduce her. But I'm like, bro, I, I have to say, it's safe to assume that Jason Weaver is in the back. And he introduced her. She came out and showed her ass. And Jason Weaver was in the back like, oh, Lord. I, I don't know. What the fuck was that? Disrespecting me. <sighs> It was bad. I mean, it wasn't it was a good ter- it, it wasn't, wasn't bad. It was, it was terrible. It was really. It was awful. It wasn't a, it it was wasn't a good move. It was and awful. That everybody that paid their, for their money for their tickets at the Hollywood Bowl to sit there and. But that was that one that part show. of the show. I don't know how. Like I said, she wasn't in the whole production. She just did that one song. So I don't know what the reason was behind doing just that one skit or song or whatever. But she wasn't. She wasn't in the the whole production. So that was the only part she was in. So if you paid your money to go to the Hollywood Bowl your night, you you more than likely got your money's worth. Minus her. (laughs) Minus her. Yeah, you're right on that one. I'll give you that. But I'd still I'd still be pissed. Because that's all I'd be talking about. And that's all there's no reason. There's no reason for her to be in that. And taking away the opportunities for some young kid like a Jason Weaver or some kids. You saw the auditions. There were auditions, three or four auditions that I saw of these kids that were singing really well. And that's what you lose to before you used to lose out to talent. Now that's what you're losing out to money. But that's that's why I'm saying, I I think that the, it was, she wasn't part of the production. Her outfit didn't even match anybody's. So I don't think she took away from another child for the overall night. I don't know. Yeah. But I, um, there were auditions for it. She did. she did. Yeah, there was auditions for it. She yeah, they showed the auditions for it. She took for, away. For the Hollywood that Bowl night, that night? She took, away from, she took so. away from some other kid's night that has been practicing and rehearsing and doing the most auditioning for that 20 seconds or 30 seconds. That's what I'm saying. She wasn't part of the production. I do not think that she took away from another kid. Of course she did. No, I I think she did. I think she took away from them other kids and it sets a, it sets a bad precedent for me. If I'm a mother and it's a bad precedent for everybody. If that's the well, case, I, I get that. But at the end of the day, I'm like, I mean, we, we, draw the fucking line at the end of the day. <laughs> I'm tired of these fucking Nepo babies and these people that have money that they could just throw money at the producers or the directors or whoever and or whatever and say, 
you know, fuck these, fuck these kids that have been working their asses off to get this role. And now you're just going to put my kid in there. Nah. I yeah, been- my daughter auditioned for Simba Lion King, but they gave it to a Nepo baby. Yeah. Other kids auditioned, kids auditioned for it. Yep. I'd be pissed if that was I me. Said- if I was a parent, I would be pissed. And I would not, I would not like that. I'm going to have to, I'll look it up too. I, I have to see that because I just can't believe it. And I don't care. That and listen to me. I don't, I wouldn't even care if, if I just looked it up. I wouldn't even care if Northwest was talented and was doing I'm the not most. I'm Trump support. I look up my own stuff. Uh, this is like, what? Go ahead. I'm like, I what always look up my own stuff. Like, like everybody keeps comparing Blue Ivy to Northwest. At the end of the day, Blue Ivy is her mother's child. And that was her mother's concert. It was her concert. And it was her concert. So she's like, I want to have my daughter come in. And don't get it twisted. The first concert in in Europe, Blue Ivy kind of fucking shit on herself. And everybody talked about her. But Blue Ivy took that and was like, okay, I'm going to come back. And I'm going to fucking blow it out. And she did. This is a whole nother different nut. This isn't the Kanye West show or the Kim Kardashian show. This is the 30th anniversary of the Lion King. Of all the kids in this country that have worked their asses off to audition and be be in that part for seven seconds or 10 seconds to sing that part. I don't like the fact that uh, Northwest was given that role. And I've heard a lot of shit on TikTok, and not saying that TikTok is fucking true, but I've heard a lot on TikTok that, you know, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, like, dropped a lot of money to the producers, or and, and not dropped a lot of money, but also on top of that, you know, you, know, you, you reel it back. It's like... um the 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 Lion King is produced by ABC and Hulu and Disney and the whole nine and it goes back where now the the keeping up with the Kardashian is on Hulu so it always comes back to whatever so I'm like nah I just I just don't like that 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 she was allowed to sit up there and then when the and, the, and I watched it a million times. And I'm like, she didn't even look like she wanted to be there. She was like side eyeing the friggin' real ass Broadway people or the 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 actors and actresses and singers and singers and dancers. She was like side eyeing them. And I was like, why are you there wearing that friggin' big bird outfit? That was a horrible ass outfit. Terrible. Disrespectful. I ain't in the business, but that shit was fucking mad rude. I'm gonna shut up now. I'm sorry. So supposedly, yeah, as I long think- as she could care, Gail Gabe Turner, who's a partner in Fullwell, is the creative showrunner for The Lion King. <clears throat> this was a shoe in for North, and said she was told that if she could carry a note, the gig is hers. So there's no one else that I also auditioned for. Okay. Insider added that Which North's ability to make headlines for performances was a key factor behind the decision to cast her for the role. They were hoping to draw publicity for this, which they did. But North yeah. didn't have to compete against anyone else and who had auditioned would have not gotten it anyways. This is 100% the result of the family's relationship. So, I, and like, and Tanya brought up the very good that. point about Hulu because they have their special on Hulu and Disney and Hulu all together. So that was, it's probably going to be on their show next season. It is. Her getting They've off already the said that. It's already came on out. That, all of that, all of that drama. So now they're waiting for next, for the new season of the Keeping Up with the Kardashians. And now that's going Which to be I'm, a, a major part of that now. season. People, so will still, people are going question. to continue to watch it. That's trash. Keep it, keeping in this the same vein of this conversation, who is the worst Nepo baby that has a job? I have one that I think is the worst actress out there. 
Dakota Johnson oh. is the fucking worst actress out there. If Don Johnson and Melanie Griffin were not her parents, she would not be where she is. That is the blandest woman in Hollywood. Well, the number one of all time is Sofia Coppola. That part. fantastic you know, director, but that? Sofia Coppola in Godfather that. Three was. <clears throat> I couldn't put it there because she, no, she did. She was smart enough to walk. No, no, she never acted again. Away. That's what I'm saying. She was smart enough because she was so hard. And she didn't have a choice but to walk away. She became a director. The, it's not about being smart. Point. She was so Listen horrible. To Listen to my point. She was so horrible. She left it alone and went into directing. Dakota is so freaking horrible. And people say it every single movie she comes. And she still keeps out there because that's the only gig she's ever going to get. That's my point. But, but you can't blame Dakota Johnson for keeping on going because she keeps getting the roles. Yes. So I'm just so the thing is, I, I, I don't bl- I don't was, blame her. She's if she's who do you think is the worst nepo baby? And I said Dakota Johnson. That's my number one. You said Sophia Coppola. Coppola. That's your number one. That's all I'm saying. I mean, she's just my number one. I think she's awful in her movie. But I'm not disagreeing awful. with Dakota. I'm not disagreeing with Dakota Fanning. But I think she is more serviceable than ruining an entire film franchise. Godfather yeah, was a two-time... Awesome. You ain't saying nothing. You blaming no, you, the you failure on that, Sofia Coppola? Say that. Wait, no. Yes, so of Godfather the 3? Of, on her? She was of a Godfather her. 3, she of the, the trilogy. Yes. She, she, was, she played the daughter. She played the grand... Right. She played the granddaughter. She was the single. She was in a bunch of scenes. She played the the daughter. She was a a, a supporting actress in that whole film and ruined the whole franchise. The writing ruined the whole thing. That movie was shit from the start. Yeah, no, but the the main reason that movie was. Acting, the acting also ruined it. You had her with her non acting ass with fucking. Um, what's his name? Garcia. Pacino, Andy Garcia. Andy yeah. Garcia. She Andy was Garcia. she was like the love of Andy Garcia, and I was like, where is this going? When I watched it, I, and I listen, I am a Godfather aficionado, and when I watched <laughs> Godfather three, I was like, where is this fucking shit going? Why are we doing this? Yeah, because Why the writing was so bad. Right? Because no, the writing, I, no, it wasn't the writing. Was I, I so agree bad. with you, Shahida, in that it wasn't the writing was bad. I agree with you in that the writing was bad, but I also agree that the acting was even worse. Upon Al Pacino, and honestly, Andy Garcia, and honestly, Sophia if Cole, she wanted to do another and, movie, she could have uh, came back and Ryan did another King. one because of the name. They should have never. But made I, the, I, you know, I, listen, listen, we're talking about nepo babies, but at the end of the day. Yeah, Nepo Babies with Sofia Coppola, yes, I get that. But we brought up The Godfather. This was an instance of... No, I didn't bring up The Godfather. I was talking about Nepo Babies. You all went on a tangent about The Godfather. I didn't bring it up. There's no need to have a a version three. Like, Godfather 1, Godfather 2, classic. No need to have a Godfather 3. Stop it. But this is where people Back to my question like now. Coppola and his people are like, okay, we're going to do a three and we're going to go there. And it's like, it's not necessary. And he it probably really did it because he wanted to put his daughter in it. Exactly. And that's the, the, the most egregious per, thing for, for me of direct nepotism ruining a franchise yep. or a tarnishing a fan. Dakota Fanning is a regular actress. White girl, standard, Dakota regular Johnson. actress, who's Dakota, Dakota, Dakota Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, Dakota Johnson is a regular white girl, serviceable, serviceable a- a- actress. She's not good. She, I mean, she's not great, but 
there's a lot of other regular old Kristen Stewart type, you know, regular old white girls that are just doing, you know, basic things that are like, okay, well, why is she special? She's not special. She just, she, I mean, she's not good, but anyway, so no, you I can agree. move on from it. I agree. You can move on from it. And you know what? I don't feel bad for Sophia yeah. Coppola because at the end of the day, she had her moment where she acted in fucking the Godfather part three with Andy Garcia and Al Pacino and Diane Keaton and her daddy <laughs> was directing it. But at the end of the day, Sophia Coppola ain't hurting. Because Sofia Coppola, at the end of the day, after that, when that shit went south and nobody was watching that shit, what did Sofia Coppola do? She fucking rode her daddy's coattails in the fucking vineyards of fucking wine country in California and created her own goddamn champagne and wine and the whole nine. So she good. Same with. But she the- also got nominated for an Academy Award for her writing and directing. She's also no joke when it comes to writing and directing. Now, you got to give her props on that, even if she came off the coattails of being a horrible actress and, and using her daddy's fame. But the proof is in the pudding of her work as a director and as a writer is 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 really fantastic well, to the point of... of I, after after The Godfather 3, this is why I don't, me, put, why I don't understand why you put her in that I haven't heard nothing about Sofia Coppola until she, after The Godfather 3, and she went and did her little champagne and wine shit so I didn't know that she directed and wrote shit. So please correct me. Tell me what what she did because I'll go watch um, that shit. Did you ever send it? Right. Right. Text it to me and let me know because I'm all about giving people their props. But at the end of the day, no, she did. She did. Right um, I didn't direct, know that she. I didn't know that she. Have, I didn't know that she wrote and direct directed. Like other stuff. That's why I, I, I wouldn't put her as the worst. She won an Oscar. She won an Oscar. For what? I will tell you in a second. Hold on one second. She won an Oscar for. Um, in uh, she won. Uh, she's nominated for nominated for an Emmy award. She was. Uh, just hold on one second. National Board Review. Uh, Venice Film Festival won the Golden Iron, won Con Film Festival. Um, hold on, Caesar Award, da, 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 Golden Academy Awards, Lost in Translation. She became oh, yeah. the first woman to be nominated for writing, directing, and producing in the same year, and won for Best Writing Original Screenplay for Lost in Translation with Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson. I did not know so, that she did that. And you know what? I'm going to rewind. Let me rewind while we're recording. Rewind that shit back because I tell you what, I loved Lost in Translation. I watched that shit like three times with Bill Murray and Scarlett Johansson. I thought that was a great movie. I didn't know that. Yeah, was she, won, she won an Academy Award for that. I didn't so know to go from. So I take it back. Yeah. Give that bitch all her so flowers. So how do you put her in the and, oh, Never mind. Never mind. You said acting. You said who's you said Nepo babies and you said and you brought up an actress. You said she's a horrible actress and I and I took it through the most horrible actress. The only reason why let me finish. Let me finish, let, me finish let, me finish let me finish now. Let me finish now. Let me finish now. Let me finish now. Let me finish now, Shahida. Because you I let you finish. Let me finish now. You brought up acting. I brought up for me the most egregious acting because of Nep. All right, we can move on. Y'all two going at it and, and talking over each other. Chris, let, I'm, I'm going to take the reign on this one. Shahida, shut no, your mouth. No, you just Chris, mind your business. What you're saying. We, we, can, we, can, we can, I was just trying to explain to you how you set up the protocol of what you said was the most egregious the thing for the, co- thing. Shahida. the worst Nepo baby. Chris. Keep no, you said the worst Nepo baby. baby, and you and you brought up. Oh, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let's move on. Let's move on to something else. Let's move on to something else. Move on to something else. Move on to something else. No, it's not. It's not. I, it's, I've done three times. Just move on. Let's move on to something else. Let's move on to something else. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. What, what are you talking about? It's fine. I'm going to finish this and say, we'll move on to something else, but I'm going to finish this and say that. I take that shit back because 
I thought she was, I'll say this, and I will own that. I thought she was horrible in Godfather 3. But I didn't know that she did Lost in Translation. Because I tell you what, that's a movie, movie that I, I will always love. And I didn't know that she Which wrote that and directed it. And, and when she was making her champagne, her little, like her, she had her little Sophia, like she had her little cans of champagne, six packs. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get that. I, I credit her for her wine, her champagne, not so much her acting skills. I didn't know that she did Lost in Translation. So I will give her that credit. I'll rewind that back and give her the, give her, her flowers and that. Because that shit was fucking good. I love that shit. No other Nepo babies? I can't name any off the top of my head. Um, and and well, at the end of the on. day... Listen, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this real quick. At the end of the day, I'm not against nepo babies. If your kid is talented and they work hard and they they do the work, and I'm I'll give them their flowers and I'll give them their shine. But it was the whole the, the Northwest thing threw me for a loop because I was like, God damn. All these kids, this is the 30th anniversary at the Hollywood Bowl. And I'm like, that shit just dis disrupted my brain. Because I was like, all these, I'm sure there were like a million kids that were auditioning to sing that goddamn song, Just Can't Wait to Be King. And I'm like, and they gave it to her. I didn't like that. Now, if, if Northwest killed it and sang the most, wore the proper costume, and studied. did it, I'd have been like, okay, go ahead, Northwest. Go ahead, Northwest. Do your thing. Because at the end of the day, this is the world we live in, people. People have that people that have power and privilege and money, they are always going to get their kids into that spot. It is what it is. I would do it. If I, if I had kids and I had the money and the power and the privilege to do that shit, I would do the same thing that Kim Kardashian did. But I would definitely make sure that my daughter or my kid was talented enough to get up there and do that. Because I, I would say to her or him, you already know it's a Hollywood Bowl. Everybody's cell phones is going to be out. So you better fucking make sure you come and come correct. Period. So you know whose kid would have been would have been interesting to see Mariah Carey's daughter if she can sing. I don't know. You've never I've seen her like sing with her mother like on TikTok or something. But if Mariah Carey was going to put her daughter out there, she would have been prepared. And I'm going to say that's a no because I went to the Mariah Carey Christmas show at the Boston Garden in December, mm -hmm. and she brought her daughter out there, albeit. Her daughter, her daughter had a little bit of range, but her daughter was not would have not been prepared for the Lion King. I think her daughter. But you was don't think you would have made sure that I she think, was prepared? I think her daughter was comfortable and prepared to sing with her mother on her mother's mm -hmm. Christmas tour. You understand? She's like a blue ivy. I think that Mariah Carey's daughter was prepared to sing with her mother on her Christmas tour going around the country like Blue Ivy was going around the country with Beyonce in her Renaissance tour. And she, you know, she might have fucked up the first couple of shows and then she got, she, you know, she felt herself and she, you know, she got within her um, shit. I don't think that if Mariah Carey went to the Hollywood Bowl and said, this, I'm doing this. I'm doing my Christmas show. On the first night, I'm going to have my daughter come out and sing one of my famous Christmas songs. Nah, I don't. I think the same shit would have happened. I think that people would have been like, really, Mariah? You got your daughter out here? Because when I went to see her at the, at the TD Bank, the, the garden, her daughter came out, and albeit she was okay, 
like I I looked at it as as a as an older person. I looked at it was like, okay, that's Mariah. That's her daughter, and her daughter's coming out and singing one song, and I didn't care how good her daughter was or how bad her daughter was. All I cared about was I was like, that's nice. That Mariah Carey, that's her child. She wants to bring her daughter out, and her daughter is brave enough to come on stage and sing to the thousands of people at the Boston Garden and sing one song. And I was like, it wasn't that great, but I was like, good for you, child. You're fucking 12 years old. Okay. I thought she would have prepared her, but okay. Uh, All right, what's next? What are you talking about next? Speaking of Nepo babies and rich ass people doing what the hell they want to do. Donald Trump, 34 counts, guilty. Any thoughts, comment, (laughs) political commentary? Listen, the only comment I have with with Donald Trump is that he's a fucking hypocrite. You know, let's just roll the tape. I mean, there's nothing to say about that. I mean, he said back in 2016, I think, whenever, whenever he was running against Hillary... And he's like, lock her up. And there was a potential for Hillary to go to court, whatever. And he's like, if she's found to be um, guilty, like a convicted felon, she shouldn't have to, she she should not run for president. Like, it's just a bad move or whatever he said. And now here we are in 2024. And now he is a, he is a convicted felon. And now he's flipping the script it's it's this politics listen i'm so over fucking politics at this point in my life because i'm like you got these people that will say one thing yesterday and then tomorrow will say another thing and with, with a straight ass face this is what i don't like with a straight ass face this is my point too because you're exactly right and it's 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 hypocrisy at its worst if trump wins, the system is working. If Trump loses, the system is broken. So no matter what, if it's not in his favor, it's always going to be a corrupt system. It's always going to be rigged or something. So he already set you up from the very beginning that if he loses or if it's against him, that the system is corrupt. It's not he's corrupt, even though we have heard him say that the reason why he paid her that money was because she, he didn't want to upset his wife about that little dalliance that he had. He's already said that. He's owned up to it. Now everybody wants to pretend that that never even happened. And then some guy and they're, they're interviewing like these little people in Minnesota and they're saying, well, who's going to believe a hooker and a, and a known liar talking about Michael Cohen? Trump is a fucking known liar. You believe everything that comes out of his mouth and he'll contradict it in two seconds after that. I'm so He was using campaign funds funds as well. Exactly. And that's what made it the bigger case that no one, because everyone kept thinking, oh, it just has to do with um, a Stormy Daniels, a, 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 a porn star. No, it was specifically because he was using campaign money. And that kind of got overshadowed from everything else because it was very much so more salacious to talk about that part of the the um, thing. I'm so tired. Of, I'm so tired. Of, I'm so tired of Trump. I'm disgusted that Marion Robinson passed away at 89, Michelle Obama's mother, and we still got to look at this this piece of trash. <laughs> this. What is the universe doing? Well, I'm, I'll say this about. I was shocked when. I saw that yesterday. I, it came up on my timeline yesterday that uh, Michelle Obama's mother died. And I was a little sad. I, I was very sad on that. That shook me because I'm like watching her through these years of the Obamas in the White House. I was like, nobody heard anything about her. You understand what I'm saying? I'm like, no, I didn't know that maybe she was sick or maybe she had you know, whatever. I'm just thinking this woman's going to live to be like a whole ass 90, 95 or a hundred. So when she, when I got, when I got that shit on my timeline that she passed away, 
I was, I was very sad on that because I was like, I wasn't expecting that. If anybody to die, I wasn't expecting her to die. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't know that I there, was there was an some, issue. With some her. rumor. Remember, there was some rumor a couple of years ago that she had passed away, and and, and then they I had to come out that. the same day and say, yeah, I remember because I was still on TikTok then, not TikTok, um, Twitter. It was around that time. So it was before COVID. There was like this rumor that she had passed away and then they had came on and said, you know, that wasn't true or whatever. So I wonder if she had been sick and if that, well, it doesn't even matter. It was just like, she, she seemed like a very gracious lady. She did a lot for them. She helped raise the girls in the White House. I love that they carried her in there with them. Yes, you know, absolutely. It, it was a very close and well-connected family that we have not had um before i mean you know you had other close families but you know you didn't have the grandmama living in the white house with the children right so. no so I, I know michelle I think she's supposed to be in at brown university in the next couple of weeks too oh is she so i don't know if that's going to happen michelle obama is supposed to be at brown i think it was supposed to be next week so i don't know if she's still oh, you know well, we'll see. I just, I, you know, I feel bad, you know, I don't, I don't, um, I don't like the fact that, you know, you know, we're at this, this is our age group now and it terrifies me and it literally, it, I have anxiety about it. It's like, w this is our age group now that we are, are, are of the age group that we're the next generation to bury our parents. Mm. And for me, that's terrifying to me. I mean, my dad died, but I didn't have a, little, a relationship with him. So that's a moot point. But I don't know. I, I just like, I think, I think when I already, I'm, I've reserved myself to the point that my mom is going to be gone sooner rather than later. And for me, I can't stomach that. Like for me, that for me, that would be like the ultimate at that point, that would be like the ultimate for me that I'm 100% alone and I ain't got nothing. I mean, I have nobody to call. You understand what I'm saying? Like I call my mother every day. My mother calls me every day. We talk to each other. You got like your brother. Day. I do have my brother, but my brother, I, I, I don't talk to my brother like that on a regular basis. See, so ninety-five percent. Yeah, but we'll I mean, you guys would have each other at least. I know, but at the end of the day, I'm like, it disrupts my, more, right? it disrupts my cycle. And I'm sorry, I can't, I can't believe you guys can't see me. I gotta, I gotta get up and put my um umbrella down because you're, you're getting like my nose and my mouth and not my mm -hmm. whole face. But here we are. So for me, it's like. I have to resolve myself in the fact that like we are that generation now that we got to we got to literally seriously figure out like our parents are about to fucking die. I mean, my mother's 80, my mother's going to be 81 in July. Our parents are in our 80s. We're we're like 50, we're all 56. Come on, do the math. I'm going to speak for myself. My mother wasn't, my mother hasn't been the most um, responsible person when it comes to her health and eat, her eating habits. She's got diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, the whole nine. And she's on all these goddamn medications. But at the end of the day, she likes what she likes. And she's going to eat her food and drink her drink and be like, whatever. But also, she sometimes it's not even the person who you think. It, it's the person who has done all those things, and things just pop up like cancer, all just out of nowhere. So Facts. you just Facts. never know. And I don't like to think Facts. about it either. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Bring, I, like I didn't people. mean to bring us down on this conversation. I love like my two little it, people. It I, I'm just. I'm just. <laughs> This is where my brain is at now, at the at the age that I'm at and the stage in my life where I'm just thinking about my life, my longevity, and the only other person that I have, I mean, outside of my brother, 
is my mom. I mean, I got my niece and my, my niece and my nephews and they've got kids and it's like, but at the end of the day for me, it's like, if once my mom is gone and if my bro, my bro goes for me, that's like the end of the, this, this is the end of the goddamn shit for me. That's the way, that's the way I think. Well, your, your brother has life. what, two children, two children, three, three. Three, so you got you know nieces, a niece and a nephew, two nephews. Yeah, but they, 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 but so here's the thing. Line continues, you but just... here's the thing: these kids today weren't raised like we was raised. Like when I was coming up, it was like my mother and my grandmother would be like, "Call your uncle, call your aunt, call your call your cousin, call this person." Call they would be in my head like, "You got to keep in touch with these people." Dot 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 dot. This is why I have the relationships, the the small relationships, because I was keeping in touch with everybody in my family because my mom and my grandmother was like, call this person, that person, that person, keep in touch with them, yada, yada, yada. You have to do this. Then when I became mm-hmm. an adult, I was like, really, I don't really don't have to do this because I don't like that person. Even though they're my cousin, I don't like them. Mm-hmm. And I don't like my uncle. I don't like my aunt. And I don't have to keep in touch with them because I'm a fucking grown ass woman. And I don't like that toxicity in my fucking life. So I've cut off a lot of people in my life. But at the end of the day, the people, the the short list of people that I keep in my life, if they have children, their children ain't reaching out to me and saying, you know, whether it be text or Instagram or whatever, be like, hey, TT, or hey, Tanya, whatever, you know, I'm just checking in, saying hi. I got two of my cousin's children that keep in touch with me. And my brother's children, three children, randomly will text me and be like, hey, TT, I'm just checking in on you. How you doing? What's up? What's up? What's good? And I'm like, all's good over here. That's good, though. But that's good. But I have a big family on my mom's side and on my dad's side. And I'm like, at the end of the day, there's a whole lot of you motherfuckers that should be fucking reaching out. I'm not reaching out to you, but you motherfuckers will call me when you get married and have babies and you want to fucking call me or invite me to your baby shower, your bridal shower, your wedding, and the whole nine. Nah. And then get mad when I respectfully decline. I'm not coming. And I just did that today. There was a baby shower today that I was like, yeah, I'm not going. Why? Because why am I going? I ain't seen you since you was in high school. Now you are a whole fast 30 something year old woman having a baby, getting married, got married, had a baby. And now you want to fucking invite me. You invited me to your wedding. I didn't go. Now you invite me to your baby shower. I'm not going because at the end of the day, what do you want from me? You want my money. You want my gift. It's- you want my gift and you want my money. I'm keeping it very real with people. You want my gift and you want my money. But nobody's called me to sit here and be like, hey, TG, how you doing? Not in this day and age of technology. You better check in on me. Or otherwise, don't fucking, don't waste your stamp. Period. I'm done. I hope, Am I right? I think that's most generation now, too. You what? What'd you say? I said it. I think that's much, much. (laughs) Go Go ahead, ahead. Chris. I think that's the most, the younger generation that is now anyway. I think Gen Z and, and millennials, they don't, since communication is so easily affordable to them, they're used to having uh, text and chat and this, stuff and, and, it's a lot easier for them to communicate, but we know we have a precious attach attachment to real communication. I think where real connection, I, I don't, I, I don't think they, they see the importance of checking in on somebody or even though it's so easily available to them, I don't think they have a distinction between we understand what it's like to really communicate to someone and how easy just to communicate to someone could be. 
I think they just use it as a, you know, it's not a real, there's a lack of connection with, I think, the younger generation to, um, to each other and, and, you know, and that affects how they would treat, how we keep communication more precious than they do. You know, we used to write letters to, to one another, Period. you know, we had to, we had no choice. So you had to sit your ass down or write a postcard. Even if you didn't want to write a postcard from where you were traveling abroad, even if you didn't want to, you still had to go, Oh God, I got to It's so much easier for them to do it now where we go, Oh my God, all I have to do is text now. That's so much easier. And, but they don't, they don't understand. I don't think they have a concept of, you know, just like it, it, just like the remote control, we had to get up and change the channel. You're not going to change the channel. You got to get up and change the channel. But if you can go like this and, and press a button a damn wire. and adjust the things to make sure you get it just right, and the, the way we watch TV, just being watching the show. If you got up to go to the bathroom, you better do it well. And within two minutes of a commercial, you better get your ass up, pee, and then run back, or you're gonna miss. Part of the TV show. And at 8.30 on a Thursday night, if you want to see Happy Days, you know when it came on? 8.30 Thursday night or whatever it was. If you want to see The Love Boat, you got 9 o'clock on Sundays or Saturdays or whatever it was. That's what, if you want to watch The Love Boat that week. So okay. now it's just like everything is so much easier for the younger generation. I mean, that sounds like such an old fart, which I am. But it's so much well, easier for people to just... We, we have, and, and just the convenience, you know, we're so used to being, having convenience now. And we're even a victim of that as well. Like, you know, I'm not going to write a letter to someone, but I may write a long email, but yeah. people don't even do that anymore. Don't people don't even want you to call them. They don't even want you to call them. If text, text me. me, don't call me. What well, text, text, text you. I don't want you to call me. Don't listen. If you can't. But, Listen, I am that person. If you can't write, if you can't give me a one sentence text of what you want to talk about, then don't call me. Just send me a text. And if it's if it's that important, I'll call you and we'll we'll talk about it. But I don't want to be on the phone with you no more than 5 minutes, if that. Period. Yeah, but that, that kind of contradicts your own thing, isn't it? That you want. Well, like, don't you want someone to communicate with you? A text from your people, but you don't want to call. Right? Yeah. I don't mind a text. And I don't mind a call either. But for me, I if you're going to call me, we're going to have to have like a good conversation. Like it has to be like important, like pertinent information has to be discussed or else I'm going to be like, okay, good, good. Love you. All right. Five minutes in. All right. It's great. I had a good conversation with you and now, all right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hang up and and click the phone. But you have to also leave room because sometimes people might not be able to get everything out in five minutes. They just kind of like feeling you out, it, whatever, give room for people to open up. Bitch, the people that know me, the people that know me and are in my life, <laughs> no. Bitch, if you and Chris want to call me with some, with some shit, you better have you better call. Me. You better call before it's 7.30 or she going to be asleep. Listen, listen to me. And what time is it? It's 5.38. Not 7.30. At this stage in my life, you better call me before 6.30. Fuck 7.30. You better call me before 6.30. And if you call me after 6.30, you better fucking text me first. Oh, if you call me first and I don't answer, text me and fucking put hashtag. I call you all the time in the daytime and everything, and you never answer. And then I I got to call back. I don't. Because I'm, uh -uh, uh -uh. I'm in the bed child i'm in the bed you're not in the bed all the time Uh -uh. i'm good i'm in the bed i'm in the bed and and, and i'm all in my fucking murder podcast watch it listening to my shit in the bed you may call me chris may call me everybody may call me but i'm like neck deep 
in my fucking podcast. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not a ick, ick, decline, decline. Are you dying? Because if you're dying, you'll text me and be like, it's an emergency, bitch. And I'll hang up and call you right back. No, okay, sorry. moving on. Moving on. <laughs> it is LGBTQ plus what? Plus plus nine other letters. <laughs> yeah, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Month. Month. And I didn't and, know that they had a whole. I didn't know that it was a whole month. I don't. How, oh, how yeah. did you not know that? I did not know you that because it listen, that. like the past two years, I was going to the fucking Pride Parade in Boston. I thought it was just a weekend. I thought they had their Saturday and Sunday. Now it's a whole ass uh, month. It's been a whole ass month for a long time, but I, I for a long time. It. I'm all get, for it. I get it. I get it. So, because because it's LGBTQ plus month, there was a story circul- circulating on um, TikTok and Instagram. But I think this is an old story where the woman refused to go through with her engagement when she found out that her fiance had some dalliances with men while he was in college. Doesn't that sound familiar to you? This does feel like it was a couple of years ago. But I guess it's making its No, that's the first time I heard of it. Really? Yeah. So he was very ignorant. Maybe something other familiar similar to that, but in this instance I, I, I hadn't heard of this one. I thought that I did. But it was I, I thought I had it. So I'm just gonna say Shahida so I'm just going to say, Shahida, the question say? is, would we be okay with that? Well, I don't um, think, or, or, or just how, how do you feel about that? Wait, wait, listen. Look. a lot that's a lot <laughs> i'm gonna let y'all i'm gonna let y'all have your i'm gonna i'm gonna let y'all have your what the hell you switch sides that was a lot chris was like that was a lot and i'm fucking out <laughs> but here he's back all right so i'm gonna let y'all i'm gonna let y'all i'm gonna let y'all take the lead on this one what what, what would y'all do first of all can you hear me no hear what me? did you do no, you it's very out, You logged back in. I have died. My ear pods. Hold on. Hold on. My ear pods okay. died. Your ear pods died? We can died, hear you. But it's very low. But it's, we can hear you, but it's very low. Yeah, I'm trying to charge them. My ear pods died. Anyway, can you hear me? Okay, now? well, let me go. let me go first, and hopefully by then yours will... Yes, will come Go up. Ahead, so it me speak about Anya, it. and then hopefully charge the other one, right? I, it's, and mine is not that long. I'm just listening to how he sound. They both sound so angry and so upset. So I want to know how it came up. Like, what was the conversation that led up to this like blowout? Was it? Did she ask him a question and he answered honestly? And she was just like, you know what? I can't. I, I can't do this. I can't on I don't know how I would react in that situation. Like I think I would hope that if I was with somebody and we were about to get married and I loved him and he loved me and I thought he 
he said something like that, I I would hope that I would be understanding and be like, well, yeah, I, I would hope that I would be understanding. Understanding how? Like you'd be okay with that? If, if it's in his past and he said mm-hmm. that, you know, mm-hmm. he experimented, I don't know. I don't know if I would yeah. be like, you know, I don't, I definitely know I would not be her. Um, but I would hope I would, I, I would hope that I would understand. I really hope that I would understand. Okay. My turn. Go ahead. Um. I mean, and I knew you guys wouldn't agree with me, and I'm trying to. Like, I'm not understanding. Here's my thing. I'm not understanding. I'm not understanding because we. I am a. I'm gonna speak for me. I'm a woman of a certain age. I'm 56 years old. There are some things. I, I'm, I'm at the stage in my life that there are some things that I just cannot. Oh, be okay mm-hmm. with. All right. So, but I'm open minded to the fact that these young kids, you know, these 20, 30 year olds, or even the younger versions, you know, I I respect that, that they're like, I like the fact that, I like the fact that these kids are like, you know, I don't choose to, I don't, I don't choose to be female or, or, you know, male or whatever. They don't, they got these, all these got these genders and shit. Great. It's good for you, but as a 56 year old woman, if a 50 something year old man that I met in the street or at the car club or at the bar or at a restaurant was like, you know, I like you, whatever. And it comes out that he's experimented with men sexually. We're done. Period. End of story. But this is after a while. This is after, this is I don't engagement. care. They were at the age okay. that I'm at, I'm not doing that. These young kids okay. can get over that. They can, they could, they could accept that and be over that. Good for you. My black ass, nah. You can't come to me and say, you know, me and my homeboys when we was in college back in, you know, 1989, we kind of like gave each other some hand jobs and sucked each other's dicks and had some butt sex and did whatever the fuck. You know, we were experimenting. No, you can't come to me at 56 and tell me that you did, you explored. No, that's an end game for me. Because I'm, I'm an OG. I'm an OG. Can you hear me? Chris, are you back? You can't hear me? Nope. Bro, you are so fucking silent. I can hear you, I'm but you're very, very low. Very low. And now you're muted. I can't hear you now. We can't even hear you now. And here we you're are. You're muted. Okay, go ahead. You can hear me now, though, right? Yeah, it's just you're just low. Maybe I can fix it in editing. Make it louder. Is that better? Not no no no. I can't make it any better. Speak your speak. Where'd he go? Okay. What's he doing now? I don't know what he's doing. The headphones and it's not working. You can't hear me. Go ahead. Know what to do. All right. Here's what we're going to do. I'm Listen, it worked when I logged out. I'm going to lie. I spoke my piece. I'm going to log out and log back in. No, that was because he put, his head, he put his um, earphones in. can't hear me at all nope 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 nope. i can hear you but you're low Hmm? and now i can't even hear you at all and now i'm by myself hi i'm here okay yeah He, he, he Went out and can he, he's gonna come back in. Y'all just left me hanging in there by myself. I told him no, I told you guys no. I was gonna log out and log back in because it worked the last time. Yeah, okay. you can hear me, right? Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes. What'd you do? 
I logged out and came, came back in again. I don't understand what, what happened. It doesn't make sense. It said it said on the screen that you had changed re, um, listening devices or something. But anyway, go ahead before something ha- else happens. What's your opinion? first of all? First of first of all, <laughs> you, 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 I don't think I, there is a double standard, which is fine. It's just part of life. If a man is messing with another man, you 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 get or. It's it's too it's too it's if you if you're having Say it's, it with it's your there is a, there is there is a double standard just like there's a double standard and I'm okay with the double standard <laughs> but as a man you know you are okay with that yeah you're not you, you're not gonna your sound is off turn your what? sound uh, up your sound is off but go ahead finish. So, so here's a, here's a, here's a funny, here's a funny thing. Uh, about 25 years, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, me and like four of my boys were walking together. <coughs> we were, we were walking on the street, right? And mm-hmm. someone smacked me upside the head, right? When, you know, we were messing, messing, messing around. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh man, I hate when people, you know, dudes, you know, smack each other and hit each other, right? And it's like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. All the boys, yeah, I hate, I hate when you get smacked in the head. And the other guy goes, don't you hate in the gym when you used to have the rat towels and you used to do this and you smack each, you know, snap each other in the shower and it fucking stung you like, oh, I hate that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And my other brother goes, yeah, yeah. And then you, you go over there and you go, yank on your boy's dick. And we're like, he's like, yeah, don't you know, you like, a, you're horsing around. And he's like, rah, rah, like that. And I was, we were like, no man, no, we we don't we don't do that. He's like, y'all don't like, you don't like that, like, like, and I was like, no man, we don't we don't do that. <laughs> we broke out laughing. We're like, nigga, nigga, who who you messing? Who you fooling around? We don't do that. He's like, you don't, you don't, just like, what Jim, what Jim, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in high, in high school, I was like, no man. Cause you're all like, you know, when you get hit, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when you snap, oh yeah, yeah. You know when you break on your butt, it's like, no, no, man, no, no. Uh, what? It was funny. Anyway, we went from snapping towels funny. to jerking each other off. That's some bull. That's some bullshit. Yeah, and also, like, e- even there's a, there's a un un a man rule that you you know, like, if you see a urinal and there's five urinals, you just know growing up. If a guy's on the end, you gotta have one space in between the urinals. Unless, unless it's, there's not many urinals and you have to stand next to it. You don't just roll up next to someone on a urinal. You'd be like, why are you, why are you, why are you trying to get close to me on the urinal? I mean, like, yeah. give me some space. Men are very territorial like that. So sure. when it comes to like, <sighs> yeah, I, I, I gotta agree with homegirl. Now, if she, if she had it, if she, if she, is this a, I wonder how she found out. That's how I want to know. Did he volunteer that information? If he volunteered that information, yeah, why did he volunteer that information thinking it would be okay to volunteer that information? Thinking that she be, she might be okay with it or, or being accepting for who he was. If you've had a gay experiences in college, I, I think, I don't, I can't, I think you you might you might be get to, to even have the urge to to want to be with another man or woman. That's what do you mean, or a woman? So if a woman, if a woman, like a woman on just, woman, just, yeah, just decides to see, but see, or whatever, that, that that's what I'm saying is the is is the double it's standard the double because standard. first of all, first of all, here here's the, also the physical double standard. Women can only do so much with each other. You know, they can only they can only do so much, right? With a man, there's penetration involved. There's like extra, there's like extra shit going on as opposed to women. And women are, you know, women are beautiful creatures. They're beautiful beings that look beautiful. Men are ugly, hairy. Mom. To to be attracted to to be attracted to to. Uh, to even want to want to have sexual relations with another man to me is like 
you got to really be attracted to another man. And I don't, I don't have that in my, that's not in my, I wouldn't be like, I wonder if that's like saying, I wonder if, if I would be attracted to a, an animal. It's just not, it's just not, it's just not in my, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just not in my, my purview. I'm not, a, yeah, but it's, but it's still something that I'm not, if, if I was attracted to, like even with pedophilia, I'm not attracted to children. I don't want a child. I don't want any of that. Look, I don't even want someone who's who's under twenty something. You know what I mean? Who's under thirty something? I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not attracted to. It's just not in my. It's just not in my thing. But if you've already explored that, and you've already gone there, you you you're still. I would imagine you have something that's still there with yes. that. Does that make sense? Okay. You, there's something about that that attracted you in the first place. I, I I don't know. I don't know because also if he's if he brought it up, how do you know he's not going to want to do it again? That part. That fucking part. Look, so you could you could have come to me at today and said you know thirty years ago, thirty five years ago when I was in college, I experimented with my homies because we were like roommates you did or you're talking a story no i'm just saying in general like oh, okay i ain't down with that like you can't come to me as a 50 something year old man if i'm married to you or dating you and say you know 30 years ago when we was in college me and my homies was in college you know we experimented a little bit and we kind of like looked at each other's peepees or touched each other's peepees or maybe looked at each other's booty holes. Now I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to I don't tell me anything. No, I, I listen. When I listen, our wedding day could be tomorrow, and I that shit would be canceled <laughs> real quick tomorrow. But I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be. The, <coughs> the the whatever the fuck you call it whatever i'm just trying to be the the, the god correct. of the young people yes i'm trying to be politically good my old ass would be like nah we're good take your ass i'm can't the wedding is canceled even though we're getting married tomorrow the wedding is canceled i'm going to take the hit with the fucking function hall the caterers my dress your tuxedos everybody's plane tickets we're done here what are you but, afraid of though are you afraid of him relapsing yes because at the yeah. end of the day if no at, not relapsing at the end of the day i'm like so you suck the dick because that's my that's gonna be my question you suck the dick and i suck dick <laughs> so now we're like girlfriends sucking dick <laughs> I can't fuck with you. We're out. We're done. That's a done <coughs> thing. And if you if you took it further Man. and was like, Man. Man. oh, we was in we was in the bed and listen, we go in there. Don't say, ma'am. No, you opened up this Pandora's box, or Chris opened up the Pandora. <laughs> whoever opened up Pandora's box. Listen, and it, and it might get to the point where it's like, you know, ma'am, that's my homeboy. We cuddled, and you know he might have slipped. He might have slipped oh, his no, no. wiener. Wait, 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 wait. Booty hole. Can I stop now? You we're done. That's over. If we're done here. That he still out. is friends with, I would have a, a huge problem. oh, because I would never mentally get that out my mind. It would ha if if he. If but I wonder how he found out. out. Oh, how who? I wonder if, if there was out? what. Yeah, what if it was one of his? One of what? One of his? I, I bet you. Well, I'm just I'm speculating. I wonder if it was like a guy from college said, "I got video of of me." Well, and they wouldn't have it in college, right? Or how but about like, it's? Yeah. Or how about it's the guy that he had relations with? And right, that's what I'm saying. Still, this guy is still yeah. having feelings for old boy, and now old boy's getting married to his wife or his fiance. And he's like, 
listen, I'm going to throw this motherfucking Hail Mary right now and be like, yo, me and your, you, me and your dude fucking jerked each other off, sucked each other off and fucked each other. And here we are. Ma'am. If you love him Ma'am. in college, we did this in college, but if you really love him, then marry him. I'm going to be his groomsman because you already know old boy's going to be a groomsman in that wedding. Please. I, I have a bad Trust me. Obviously. No. That's a hard on. no for me. These young kids, though, you know, these 20s and 30-year-olds, I'll give them grace because these young kids today are so... I'll, I'll give them grace because these young kids today, these 20 and 30-year-olds, are like, you know... I'm a woman identifying as a man, identifying as a whatever the fuck. And I'm exper- I'm experimenting and doing the most. These younger kids can get away with it. Our asses, I'm not doing that. Ain't no 50-something-year-old man that I'm dating, if I'm dating him, is going to ever come to me if we are in love with each other and he says to me, you know, when I was in college, me and my homie. That's 30, so 35 years ago. So 35, 35 like this, this seemed like this, this relationship, they were, they were in their thirties. Were they in their thirties? I don't don't know. You can't tell. I'm not doing it. Yeah, I don't know about that. You couldn't come to me. You couldn't come to me if you, mom, Chris, hypothetically speaking, let's just put the cards on the table. If me and you was dating and we fell head head over heels in love and you, my family loves you, your family loves me, and we're like, yes, we getting married. We doing the most. You could never come to me. Let's just put the shit on the table. You could never come to me at the fucking waking hour of our wedding and say, T, so, uh, you know, back in the day when I was at Georgetown, I had a little tryst. I was exploring, trying to figure myself out. I had a little tryst. I gave it a little... Yeah, but you can't... That's not, that's not figuring and yourself out. If you have a proclivity... If you have even the, the, the idea that you would like to think about what it would be like to suck a dick, you're gay. To me, you have gay tendencies that you, if you even think about, you know what? I wonder what it's like to suck, just to, just to see what it would be like. No, no. So we're on the same page. No. I, yeah, we are on the same page. I'm just saying, I'm just, I never, I wasn't opposing you. Oh, I was gonna say we're on the same page. I thought you was. I thought you. I thought we was about to have an argument. We on the same page. About what? Did you talk? Go ahead, boo. No, I was just. That's the whole thing. I was like, if you if you even thought about that, if you even thought about what it'd be like to jerk off a horse, you'd be like, what? What? Why would you even? Why would you even think that? Why would you even go there to? Or why would you even want what? If you even have that thought, you even have that thought. There's something. There's something. There's something. There's something. There's something wrong. With, there's something wrong with that. So if you even think about, you know, I would like to. I would like to experiment to see what it's like to be with a man. That means that you have some sort of attraction to a man. Period. Period. Okay. Okay. We we, we right? are up on after hour. Okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. Both You're right. right. One hundred percent right. I'm with you, Chris. I'm all on that shit. Fuck that. My thing is okay. So say thirty something years ago, you were in college. Like I don't know how how men feel, how young young men feel about other young men when they are like in their like on a sports team and you're you're close and you're tight 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 friend or whatever. Something happens or whatever. Because women. Technically, we have crushes on each other, don't uh-huh. we? No, oh, I have. Crushes but on it's different. But it's different with women. It's different with women. Women are also they're also idolized and as beauty, as soft as. I mean, women are beautiful. Women are beautiful to other women because women can appreciate beauty. Men are not. Men are not. There are. 
men are like, Bruh. they're like, ah, you know, men are not like beautiful. Like, There's some beautiful uh, men, into, but no, no. My thing is, my thing is, I have no problem. I have no problem with looking at women and saying that woman is beautiful. She's a bad bitch. She's sexy. She has got a great body. She's got that. That doesn't mean I want to lay you down with her. Can't do that. Not, right, right. But you can't. Okay. Well, when I say I have crushes, I don't mean like sexual crushes. I just have like crush. Is it, yeah, yeah but men crushes. don't have men don't have crush. Men shouldn't have crushes if they're if they're if they're straight. I don't have a crush on a man. Like, oh my god, I wish I could. No, but I don't have I don't have crushes on women. Like, oh my god, I wish I, I just have a crush on women and say, oh my god, she's like, she's she's beautiful. Men don't be like looking at other men and be like, damn, he has everything. He has it going on. He's a handsome dude. Blah 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 blah. That's not a crush though. A crush kind of does to me connotates that there's some sort of sexual. There's some I want to be with that person, okay. or I'm wondering. I wonder what it's like to to. Like if I have a crush on a woman, I'm like, I wonder if it's like to smack them cheeks. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, huh? Even like, like remember we even talked about like our unconventional crushes one time, and it's not even people that we. Well, no, that's not true. Okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. All right, all right. Let me let me take crush off the table because I don't want Tanya to be thinking like you know, um, um, um not, not like I if you have a crush. I don't have any crush on any men because I feel like there's a sexual component to a crush or a, or a or a romantic component to a crush. Mm-hmm. I can have, I can, I can admire another man in terms of, of what, you know, what they've made themselves into, but it's not a crush. A crush to me kind of takes my heart is involved, which is part of yeah. connected to my, my penis. You know what I mean? That to me is like, like a crush. Like I have a crush on, like I like Martha Stewart. Something about Martha Stewart is she's kind of like, oh, yeah, that was your unconventional crush. But it, but in reality, I would not want to be with Mar- Martha Stewart. But I'd be like, hmm. But there's some p- part of me be like, you know, I kind of like, you know, her attitude, and I wonder if, I mean, I don't know, I wonder if I'm attracted to a seventy-something year old woman, this and the other. But there's a component of sexuality for me when it comes to crush. I mean, that's unconventional. Like I wouldn't necessarily go, or even if it was someone who was extremely, mm, no, I wouldn't necessarily do that either. I mean, I can't believe we're still talking about this. Why? I mean, that's a... Listen, that I, a, was... as, as a woman, and I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to say it's safe to assume that as a man, <coughs> a woman, I can look at a woman and be like, she's very beautiful. She carries herself well. She's doing the most. But I don't want to sleep with her. Or have relation. All right, let's wrap it up because we are over our hour. (laughs) So that's a hell no from Chris, a hell no from Tanya, and I would have to think about a lot of things for Shahida. Are you shitting me? Yeah, definitely. I would consider. I listen. I would have thought that it would have been me, me or Chris that have been like, okay, you know. <clears throat> Look, I have a tough time with hope that I would. Cons- I, I, I don't know how I would feel about. It. I just don't know, but I don't want to be in that position I, either. But I'm just saying, I'm I have a problem with, with, with no. women who used to be Republican. Oh, shots fired! I mean, I have a problem if you like. If you, oh, I used to, I used to like Trump, or I used, to, I voted for Trump. I'm still kind of like, really. Like, I, I, I don't know if I could, I can, I can like, I can, I can fully I get past the fact that what would make you think that's even hard enough for me. You know what I mean? So there's boundaries. There's anyway. Things you don't, you won't pass. That's, right. a good, that's an absolutely good example because I think, well, we know I've dated Republican men plenty of times, but I would not now. Would not now. Not even close. I mean, I have like 
I'm but a it was a different I'm like, well, what? time, a different day. Yeah. Things have changed. Things have changed. So yeah, I'm the I odd bitch out. That ain't happening. No, not over here in this house. You never dated the All right, black guys. All right. Oh, no, I'll, no, no. I'll end it. I'll end it and be.